I caught this mouse recently, only to find it riddled with bot fly maggots. In my four plus years of catching mice, I've never come across these creatures until now. Stay tuned to learn a little bit more about these horrifying yet fascinating creatures. I know what you'll be asking. Yes, there are bot flies that infect humans, but these human bot flies are native to Central and South America. Luckily here in North America, we don't have the human bot fly, but we do have rodent bot flies. As you'll see here, the toll they take on infected mice is devastating. Here's a nice picture of one species of bot fly. They can grow quite large. Some can be the size of a bumblebee, although I'm not sure about the ones in North America. The larvae are quite big at one and a half to 4.2 centimeters in length, and up to one centimeter in diameter. Yowzas! The flies lay their eggs near the entrances of nests or areas frequented by the mice. They get picked up and they hatch in response to the body heat. These little babies then enter natural openings and then migrate to other areas, usually under the skin near the neck and abdomen. They leave a little hole where they decide to pitch their tent in order to breathe. In pure kindness, they secrete substances to reduce infections. You'd be a failure as a parasite if you killed your host before you finished growing up. In case you were wondering, they eat the blood and surrounding tissues. After about three to five weeks, the larvae exit the mouse through their little hole and pupate in the soil. If conditions allow, they'll fly in a month, but if not, they can survive the winter. In this first example, this larva, which was dark brown, is huge and would have been ready to exit this mouse anytime. They start off a little lighter colored and once they're more mature, they turn darker brown. The size of the larvae relative to the mouse is ridiculous. Honestly, can you imagine having something that size in your abdomen feeding off of you? Wait, that almost describes pregnancy. Anyway, this is a brutal parasite on such a small rodent. The discomfort must be unbearable. You'll see that this is an example of one bot fly on a mouse is nothing compared to the next mouse coming up. Closer up, here's an example of the air hole. Removal of the larva is next to impossible unless it's cut out. It has some spines to prevent removal. You can't just squeeze it out like a bad pimple, and trust me, this is not something you want popping and oozing inside your body. So this is the next one. Here's an exit wound of a successful larvae feeding its way to adulthood. Where I'm pressing is a younger larva. And bam, there are four other maggots in the abdomen of this poor mouse. There is a darker one, and it's ready to exit this mouse fairly soon. I can't imagine having these giant maggots swimming under my skin. Now I am squeezing them to show their size and to see if they'll exit if perturbed, but they never did. Catching this mouse in one of my kill traps may have been the best thing for it, considering the amount of parasitic involvement. Well, I hope you learned something today. I certainly did. I have a whole new respect for these tough little mice. Everything wants to eat them. And in this case, the bot flies literally want to eat you alive. Thanks for joining me on this very disturbing and gross ladybug adventure. <laughs>